the Rob from 1061 Kiss FM here along, of course, with my broadcast colleague. What's up? Eric Cornish with WKDQ. This No Shave November is not. Are you are you doing not, it this year? Not really working yet. It's getting there. I tell you before, I thought you looked good when you had. Uh, I think it was the goatee. Yeah, is that I, uh, what I liked. Yeah, I, I'm getting there. I don't know. It's <laughs> it looks okay. Okay. But, uh, it's not it's not quite Razor Ramon, but uh, I'm trying. Hey, for the uh, for the faithfuls, uh, sorry we didn't get one up yesterday. We are a day late, but we'll make it a good one for you today. Today is Veterans Day. Yes, it is. Happy Veterans Day, and thank you for your service to anyone who uh, has served. Uh, we definitely appreciate you for all that you've done for us, and uh, and and that's kind of what we're going to focus on today. Is uh, any any interaction for military angles or military gimmicks in wrestling? What worked, what didn't work, and uh, and then we'll just kind of throw some of them out there. So, uh, Rob, would you like to start? Uh, anything, anything that pops out to you? Well, I th- right when, when you say military, the first name that automatically jumps into any wrestling fan's mind is Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah, and I'll I'll review some Sergeant Slaughter at least. My, like, I was when when Sergeant Slaughter's big run was going on with Hogan, mm-hmm. I was not yet a fan, but I've caught up on everything, and you know, retrospectively, I've seen the angle. It's in my opinion that Sergeant Slaughter has always been a bit overrated uh, as far as at least match quality. He had great storylines written for him. He was mm-hmm. plugged into this Hogan thing, and the Iraqi turncoat stuff was probably the best military angle in wrestling, at least the most notable one, uh, and it's my favorite. But Sergeant Slaughter has never really struck a chord with me as far as someone I look forward to seeing. I will agree with you on that. As a matter of fact, Sergeant Slaughter uh, – you know, I, I don't consider, you know, an amazing worker. Yeah. Um, uh, probably one, you know, next to Andre, who at, at the time he was in the main event at WrestleMania was well past his prime, uh, probably second to him as, as far as worst workers in WrestleMania main events. Um, but as that being said, uh, he's more of a, almost like a Jerry Lawler type wrestler to where he's not afraid to take the crazy bumps. Like he may not be the best technical wrestler in the world, but mm-hmm. even even at the age he is now, we'll get into the ring, you'll see him take that crazy over the, you know, turnbuckle bump. Uh, and uh, and but but his character, whether it be a heel or a babyface, was the best yeah. military character of all time. And it, it got over no matter which what he did. Mm-hmm. So uh he, I, I the, do think that's a big one. The reason was is because of the people he worked with and the storylines that were written for him. So when I say people he worked with, I mean in front of the camera and behind it. Right. Uh, that's why he was the perennial military wrestler. But there have been others. Yeah. I remember Corporal Kirshner. Uh, y- you do, at least. Uh, <laughs> not a lot of other people do. Uh, Corporal Kirshner, I think, was the guy that was brought in to replace um, to replace Slaughter. You okay. Know, Slaughter had... Uh, Back in the day, they they weren't big fans of crossover appeal. Now today, I mean, they'll get any crossover appeal they can. But mm-hmm. when Slaughter went to do the GI Joe thing, like no, no, you can't do that. You know, I mean, gosh, look, they put them in Scooby Doo these days. That's and, right. But uh, they, they didn't really want that. So so off uh, Slaughter went, and in came Corporal Kirshner. Not a very good replacement. Um, not a great work. You know, we talk about Slaughter not being great, but Kirshner. I believe Not I've so only good. seen one or two Kirshner matches. Was he at WrestleMania two? Yes, WrestleMania two, uh, and uh, and had a match against. I believe it was uh, Nikolai Volkov. And then I remember him at the Wrestling Classic tournament. Yeah. Yeah. So I've seen those two matches, but I can't say I've seen much more from uh, Corporal Kirshner. But what a name! Now, we'll say this: I did have his action figure, the original like rubber really? action figure. And, uh, and most of the time, he was my Iron Mike Sharp. <laughs> he was the guy that lost all the matches. i just throw him in there and like, eh, I need somebody to, to beat. And that was him. Or I'd pretend he was Sergeant Slaughter. <laughs> that was, that's probably the, what most people did with their – I have, who knew that Eric had a Corporal Kirshner action I still have figure. it somewhere. And if I, have, if I find it in my attic, I will bring it in here. It will be, it will be part of our set. They were never my thing. I spend all of my uh, wrestling-related – disposable income on the DVDs and movies. Uh, I have some action figures, but they were all gifted to me. I've never been like, I want that action figure. I didn't I didn't play with them very much. Well, let's talk about this. This is somebody who I believe had an action figure, uh, if not a somewhat memorable career. How about Sergeant Craig Pitbull Pittman? Craig Pittman? You remember him in WCW in the uh, mid-90s? Uh, yeah, see? 
I don't. Not very memorable. Well, uh, I do remember. But he did have an action figure. I don't even know who you're talking about. Well, it, the, the name rings a bell, but I can't picture his face. I, I think I think they wanted a lot for this guy. Um, he did have a kind of intense uh, presentation, um, but again, not very good in the ring. Uh, I think was a legit Marine, um, but um, just just didn't. Just didn't make it. Well, WCW has uh, other uh, military ties in. How about uh, General Hugh G. Rection? <laughs> and of course, GI Bro. Did did he did did General Rection have a cross uh, a, uh, a figure? I don't know. I don't think he did. But. I can't imagine a parent going into the store looking for the Hugh G. Rection action yes. figure you know, for my son. <laughs> I'm looking for a Hugh G. Rection for my son, please. <laughs> Apparently it's a play on words, but I don't understand it if it is. I, I don't get it. Um, <laughs> so there was that. Let's let's see. I mean, other uh, tie it again. Like Sergeant Slaughter just seems to be the one that overshadows everybody. There was one on TNA. You'll remember. His oh name. yes. Who was yes. the big one from that? Uh, Jesse Neal. Yes, that's and him. And actually, they and then there's a, there's another one that they brought in recently that that only has uh, one leg. Um, that Zach that, Gowan. Not, not Zach Gowan. Um, and, and honestly, his name escapes me as well. But uh, yes, Jesse Neal uh, again, a just a big flop. I mean, they put him with uh, Shannon Moore, and that it was actually not a bad team. But no. um, correct me if I'm wrong. Was Neal a legit Marine? Yes. Well, I don't think he was Marine. Or, I think he was Army. Um, okay. But uh, but anyway, yeah, Road Dog was was a Marine. Yeah, and see, that's another one that I was going to bring up. He he was legit. I mean, he fought in Desert Storm, um, and they tried to use that gimmick in WCW, but then he became a jobber like all the rest of yeah. the Armstrongs. Um, it's interesting that instead oh, of using that in WWE, they went with the Road Dog and well a bunch of other failed gimmicks. But it's a good thing they did. His th- it was the thing they looked at his resume. Well, you were a Marine. Okay, that looks good for. Oh, but your last name is Armstrong. <laughs> yeah. That's going to cost. Sorry. You. Um, can I get any bonus points for uh, Lex Luger slamming the uh, Yokozuna on the USS Sure. Intrepid? I mean, you know, anything patriotic, <laughs> yeah. you know, fits in. I mean, you've got Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and I'm not really sure how he became the Patriot. That's a really good point. Um, I, I don't know how that even happened, but it was from the very beginning, honestly. Yeah, that's true. He, uh, I think he was somehow involved, you know, shortly after WrestleMania three. That's that's when he came to the WWE, and and then somewhere in there had a feud, maybe with the Sheik, or with well, the, and then he became the American guy for the rest of his career. He just needed people to cheer for him, so he would just throw his thumb up and go, USA, and that's, then the crowd would chant with him. That's it. So, uh, so yeah, that, that <laughs> became uh, a great patriotic gimmick as I, well. I thought we were about to get another one after the Rusev run in at one of those pay-per-views. Remember when the Russian flag, or yes. the, the American flag, yes. was hanging, and there was a, they wanted it to seem like a legit run-in, and Rusev stomped on this army guy. Yeah, and I I, I thought maybe that could have been a new guy, but uh, but apparently it was just uh, done to build heat. But yeah. it worked. I thought it was pretty good. I agree with you. It looked it looked pretty legit. The only exception being how much camera time the guy got. Yeah, it would look more real if they kind of pulled it. But no, it was well done. I agree. Yeah, and uh, so anyway, I mean, as far as military gimmicks, oh, you know, they wanted to put a military gimmick on Scott Hall. I, th- I think you've probably heard that story. I'm not sure if you have or not. Help me out. When Scott Hall came to WWE before there was Razor Ramon, you know, they were kind of going over his background as well and found out he was like a military bl- brat. He didn't, he wasn't in the military, but his his family was, and uh, and Vince wanted to make him almost a GI Joe type character, and it was Scott who spoke up and said. You know, I've kind of got this character. It's kind of based off Scarface. Have you seen Scarface? Here you go. What a and smart Vince thing liked he said. It. And uh, but had it not been for that, you know, Scott would have been the GI Joe. Did of you the know? WWE. Did you know Scott killed a guy? That I didn't know. Did you watch his E60 on ESPN? Ah, yes. Yeah, In that, I, did he, see that. He, I mean, I'll say allegedly just to cover my butt or whatever. But he admits to killing a guy outside of a strip joint. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, he, he admits to so it. So not in combat, not... Uh, Correct. <laughs> he got into a fight with, I believe, a bouncer, and I, if I'm not mistaken, he shot the dude, but it was justifiable. All right. So there you go. Yeah, watch his E60. I swear I'm not making this no, up. No, no, I, I do remember now that you say that. But uh, anyway, that's... I mean, I can't... The, the Patriot, <laughs> I don't know if he ever uh, served, and then there's also a tag team called the Patriots, which they had in WCW, which was a firefighter, 
uh, uh, Curtis Thompson, I believe was his name, but Firebreaker Chip was the name he went by. <laughs> the other guy was supposedly in the Army, and his name was Todd Champion. Now, I don't know if he actually was, but other than that, I can't really think of a whole lot of... We certainly covered the big ones. <laughs> exactly. You know, so uh, if there's any that we missed, or if you have a favorite uh, military-themed wrestling gimmick or angle... Ranger Ross. You what is going Ranger on? Ranger Ross. Who, no, who's Ranger Ross? Again, another WCW guy. I, I don't know. I can't think... I, I'm coming up with very bad ones, uh, and maybe there's more good ones we missed, but uh, let us know. We'd sure appreciate it. <laughs> we would certainly enjoy that. What about uh, John Cena, the Marine? All right, we have to get out of here. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Send us your emails. Follow us on uh, Twitter, uh, at DE Talent. And, of course, subscribe to our videos by clicking the subscribe button on whichever channel you're watching us on. Thanks a lot, and we'll catch up with you on Thursday talking Team Cena, Team Authority, and see what you think.